الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علی و صحبہ و سلم اما بعد احبت فی اللہ Continue on in our study of basic fiqh in tahara or tahara in, in prayer. We reached a very, very important bab, very important chapter full of masail in a mas'ala muhimma, a very, very important issue. And that is menstruation and postnatal bleeding. Menstruation, of course, meaning hayth when, when women go through their menstruation. Uh, their menstrual period, and postnatal bleeding, meaning after childbirth. So first, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we kitab al kareem and they ask you about menstruation. Say, it is a harm. So keep away from wives during menstruation. And do not approach them until they are pure. And when they have purified themselves, then come to them from where Allah has ordained for you. Indeed, Allah loves those who are constantly repentant and loves those who purify themselves. And this is in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 222. So menstruation, as far as the, the, what it's considered in the shara, is the flow of a type of natural blood from the womb at specific times. Uh, this blood is habitually discharged every month for six or seven days. And of course that varies with a woman, but in uh, maybe on average six to seven days uh, for a woman during this period. And the period can be more or less than that. So it depends on the woman and maybe the society, probably diet may even have a effect on that. But and you know better than I. In other words, a woman's monthly period can be longer or shorter, depending depending on the different nature of each woman, as predetermined by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Taib. rulings stated in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam concerning menstruation. First, so these are the things that are prohibited <clears throat> when a woman is menstruating during her menstruation period. So number one, it is prohibited for a, a menstruating woman either to perform prayer or observe fasting. As the Prophet ﷺ said to Fatima bint Abi Hubaysh, uh, give up prayer when menstrual period begins, when the menstrual cycle begins. So that lets us know that it is prohibited it is muharram if a woman says no i want to come closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i want to pray during this time and i want to uh uh fast that is haram she is doing a major sin because this is something which is prohibited it's not just you shouldn't or it's not just it's disliked but rather it has it is the reach the level of tahrim and because uh of the hadith that the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to Fatima bint Abu Hubaysh, give up the prayer when your menstrual period begins. Thus, the prayer and fasting of a menstruating woman, a woman are deemed invalid. So it's haram and the hukum of the salat or the hukum of the fasting is it's invalid. It's not even a valid pr prayer, nor is it valid fasting. As the Prophet wasallam has prohibited that. <coughs> And the Prophet ﷺ's prohibition means it is invalid to perform what he has prohibited. Therefore, a woman who performs such acts of worship in the state of impurity is considered to be disobedient to Allah and his messenger ﷺ. <clears throat> when the menstrual uh, period is over, a woman has to make up for the missed days of fasting, according to the consensus of the fuqaha without making up for the prayers she has missed. So she makes up, of course, her fasting, but she doesn't make up her prayers. <clears throat> and this is in accordance with the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Uh, she was asked, so she said, when we menstruated during the life of Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa so this is the dalil, the proof for this, we used to be commanded by Allah's messenger to make up for the missed days of fasting, but we were not ordered to make up for the missed prayers. 
And this is related in Bukhari and Muslim. So this hadith also, uh, to give you a little background, so it was asked uh, by another sahab, Sahabiya, radiallahu ta'ala, and about, about this, about making up this prayer. And so Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala, she respond, responded by saying, Ahururiyati ent, enti, are you from the Khawarij? Are you from the Khawarij, the Hururiyah? Because there was a plan called a place called Ahura, I believe it was. And that's where the Khawarij they, they came from, who fought and who, who fought the companions <coughs> and were responsible for the death of some of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and Majmain and made takfir of the Muslims for the major sins. So why did Aisha say this to her? Because she she was asking a question as if saying that, you know, it, it sounded to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala that she was asking and saying, hey, we should make up the, the prayer too for, for this menstruation. And so she said, enti? are you from the Khawarij? Because only the Khawarij would make extra duties and extra hardships from their extremism. And she said, La, like in inni tas'al, or inni asal, or, or kama call it. So she said, No, but rather I'm just asking. And then that's when she said this, the hadith, that during the time of the Prophet, وسلم, we made up the uh, uh, fasting and we didn't make up the prayer. So it is per impermissible for a menstruating woman to make tawaf around the Kaaba, to recite the Noble Qur'an, meaning to hold the Mus'haf and read the Qur'an, <coughs> or to stay in the Masjid. Okay? Uh, in addition, it's prohibited for her husband to have a karamakum Allah, sexual intercourse with her until her period is over and she takes a ritual bath. Okay? So those are the prohibited things. And the scholars, they make some some uh, there are fat fatawa about this from ulama ahlus sunnah about certain things like for example reading the mushaf uh, as you know in some of the madaris so that the binat the the girls and the women do not forget the quran if they are like in a program and they're a student that the scholars say okay she can wear gloves you know or put a cover on the mushaf like this or read it without touching it because it's a necessity so she doesn't forget the Qur'an. So this is from the Bab of Fatwa, from the scholars making Fatwa for that. Likewise, sitting in the Masjid, okay? So some of the scholars say, because now women can use uh, the, yes, women can uh, use the, um, uh, uh, not diapers, but women use their their pads and stuff like this. They use their menstru menstruation pads and so forth. <clears throat> and so then there's not the same concern as it was in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu that they would uh, basically leak in the masjid. Okay. So with that being the case, the scholars also say that if a woman is passing through the masjid, that, you know, and of course she's protecting herself. She's not, there's no concern that she's going to get it, the floor dirty, then she can do that. Likewise, if it's for a lecture, if it's for a lecture or something very important in the masjid, she's going, there's an alam who's going to speak. Uh, she's a regular talib at al-ilm and she's sitting in durus. She can do that as long as she can guarantee that she will not get the masjid uh, dirty. Okay, so those are the exceptional cases that the scholars, some of the scholars mention and make fatwa that it's permissible in those situations to uh for those those halat, those different situations. So, Imam Fozan, he then mentions, he says, uh, so that also the thing that we mentioned about the husband having relations with his wife, uh, he cannot, of course, when she's menstruating, they cannot, at Karamakum Allah, have uh, intercourse uh, until her period is over. And... She takes the ritual bath. She makes the ghusl. Okay, so she ha she has the the inqita of dim her her dim her her blood her menstruation is totally stopped, and then she takes her her bath her ghusl. Then they can karamakum Allah have relations, and this is in accordance to 
what Allah Tabarakutala says, Kareem, and they ask you about menstruation, say it is a harm, so keep away from wives during menstruation, and do not approach them until they are pure, and when they have purified themselves, then come to them from where Allah has ordained for you. Surah Al-Baqarah. And the phrase uh, that Allah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, keep away from wives during menstruation, means not to have intercourse with them within that period. Akramakumullah. The Prophet at salatu wasalam said, <coughs> this is very important because a lot of people have an ishqal that are married. He said, you can do everything with your wives during menstruation except intercourse, Akramakumullah. And of course, that which is totally prohibited, which is sodomy, Akramakumullah. That's never permissible. Right. Uh, he, and uh, so it is permissible for the husband of a menstruating woman to enjoy her by having affection, uh, except for having intercourse with her. It is impermissible for the husband of a menstruating woman to divorce her before her menstruation period is over. OK, so that means when a woman is in during her period, the, it is not permissible for the husband to divorce her. Okay, and then there's a lot of differences of opinion. Some of the scholars say that if he does pronounce the divorce, say they have fights and whatever, whatever the case may be, and he pronounces talaq on her, the scholars differ whether that divorce actually happens or not. Okay, some of them, they say that she's divorced. Okay, but it's a bid'ah, meaning it's, it's sinful, it's a sinful act because he did something which the Prophet ﷺ forbade and but the but the divorce happened meaning she is divorced one divorce and it is a bid'ah he gets a sin for that another group of scholars say no this bid'ah this this is talaq bid'i but it does not or it, it, it doesn't happen meaning that the divorce is not counted it's not a legitimate divorce in the shara so the scholars differ about this. This is just an issue just to let you know uh, about this, this technicality that the scholars differ and there's their, and they, and their differences. Some of it, it comes from looking at a particular hadith and how they understand the hadith, how the scholars differ in their understanding of the hadith and the language of the hadith. Okay. <coughs> uh, this is regarding talaq okay khula is a as a, a different uh and, and i'm not sure exactly but it, anyway it's, it is different than talaq oh, oh, so then uh so the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and this is in accordance uh so it's impermissible for the husband of a menstruating woman to divorce her before the menstruation period is over. So she has to finish her menstruation cycle. Uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O Prophet, when you divorce women, divorce them at their waiting period. That is, Imam Fozan explains, when they become pure from menstruation uh, and having relations. As the Prophet sallallahu ordered a man who had divorced his wife during her, her menstrual period to take her back and to divorce her if he insisted on the divorce when her period was over, okay? This is the situation where the scholars differ over this because some of them, they say, since the Prophet ﷺ ordered, her to, ordered him to take her back, that means, at that time, that means the divorce counted. Another group of scholars said, no, that's not what that means. It, uh, the divorce doesn't count, Okay? <clears throat> Once the menstrual blood stops discharging, a woman becomes pure and her menstrual period is deemed over. Okay, so once she stops bleeding uh, and she becomes pure, her menstrual period is deemed over. She must, she must then take a ritual bath. So she stopped bleeding uh, and when her, her cycle is over, she takes her, her ghusl. After which she uh, is allowed to do whatever acts of worship which were prohibited for her during menstruation. After blood stops discharging, a woman does not have to be concerned about any secretion or yellowish discharge. Okay, I think this is also a point the scholars differ, but this is uh, very 
Imam Fozan comes with the evidence, which is, is very strong. He says, as indicated in the hadith narrated on the authority of Umm Atiyah, radiallahu ta'ala anha, who said, <clears throat> we never considered yellowish discharge as a thing of importance, meaning during menstruation. Okay, so this is how the Sahabiyat, radiallahu ta'ala anhunna, ajma'in, how they, they practice. So when they even when they finished bleed their menstrual period, and if there was a little bit of discharge, a little bit of uh, yellowish, or something you know very hafif or something like this, they didn't consider that as something important. <coughs> Meaning they considered their menstruation over. So this hadith is related by Al Bukhari and other compilers of hadith, and it is deemed marfur, meaning a traceable hadith raised. Uh, to the uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Meaning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Approved of this statement uh, Imam Fuzan then mentions a very important benefit He said if the discharge of a woman In a state of menstruation or postnatal bleeding Meaning she's er, after uh, having a child Stops before sunset Before Maghrib Before Maghrib Laysa at, uh, During Maghrib but before Salat al-Maghrib, before the time of Maghrib, it is obligatory for her to perform both the Dhuhr and Asr. So Maghrib now is like 4, uh, something like 450 here. Okay, now it comes in. Say if a woman, she at 430, she, her period stops. Then she will be responsible for praying Dhuhr and Asr, because her period stopped before Maghrib, before sunset. <coughs> Taib, prayers of the same day, and if the discharge stops before dawn, it is obligatory for her to perform both the Maghrib and Isha prayers of the same night. So that means if it's if her her menstruation, her period stops before the Fajr, before Fajr comes in, right before Fajr comes in. She still, she needs to make ghusl and she needs to pray uh, Maghrib and Isha. Everybody's okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, good. <clears throat> and uh, this is because the time of the prayer for the latter is permissible, is a permissible time of prayer for the former in case of a legal excuse. So Imam Fozan then is giving us a qaida, a, a principle. He's saying the reason for this, the illa, is that this is because the time of prayer for the latter is, is a permissible time of prayer for the former in case of a durura, a legal, uh, an other, a legal excuse. So that means uh, if you're praying Maghrib, it's been delayed. You're, you're praying in the Isha time for a legitimate Sharia-based excuse that is considered the Waqta Dorora of Maghrib. Okay, and that's why this is permissible. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Imam uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala said, So the majority of scholars, such as Malik, Ash-Shafi'i, and Ahmed, view that if a menstruating woman's discharge stops at the end of daytime, it is obligatory for her to combine performing both the dhuhr and the asr of the same day. And if the discharge stops at the end of the night, it is obligatory for her to combine both the uh, maghrib and isha prayers uh, of the same night. This is because there is a legal common specified time for every two successive prayers to be combined due to a legal excuse. So you combine them, but you don't shorten them. To clarify, if a woman's discharge stops at the end of the day, it is obligatory for her to perform the dhuhr prayer and the asr prayer, for it is still a permissible time to perform the dhuhr prayer. She is still at the specified time. Uh, period of dhuhr. Likewise, if that was the end of the night, it is obligatory for her to perform the maghrib and the isha prayers as she is still at the specified time of the maghrib prayer. This ruling was narrated on the authority of Abdurrahman, uh, Abu Huraira, and Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. Like, if a woman starts discharging before she can perform an obligatory prayer at a specific time, 
The preponderant opinion is that she is not required to make up for such a prayer after her discharge stops. So she doesn't have to make up that prayer. Say, for example, you, Akramakum uh, Allah, you're in a situation and Maghrib uh, comes in and then you, uh, you start uh, having your menstruation. You're not, the majority opinion is that uh, you don't have to make that prayer. Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah says, the opinion of the Hanafi and Maliki schools is the most correct <coughs> as they maintain that a woman is not required to make up for such a missed prayer after her discharge stops. This is because making up for such a prayer necessitates a new legal principle and there is none in this case. Her delay of prayer is based on a legal excuse, so she is not to blame, as the delay is not out of negligence. If a Muslim oversleeps or forgets to perform a prayer at its due time, though it is not out of negligence, the time of prayer starts for him when he gets up or remembers. And thus his prayer is not considered a way of making up for a missed one. Okay, because he had a legitimate excuse. It was out of his control. He overslept. You know, and he wasn't because he was watching movies or he did something negl negligible, but he, you know, a legitimate thing. Now, here's the second part, which is incredibly important with regards to this, uh, this chapter. And this is talk about istihava. Istihava, <coughs> this is the blood that comes, that is not considered your period. Not considered your period and it's not considered uh, from uh, uh, childbirth. It is called istihava, istihava, and we're going to explain it. So istihava is an irregular vaginal bleeding other than menstruation caused by a vein called in Arabic an adl. The case of uh, mustahava is, is uh, uh, a confusing issue, okay, or a, a mushkil. For the blood of menstruation resembles that of, uh, that of istihava, Meaning that your uh, a woman's period and istihada they resemble because they're both blood, so it's hard to always distinguish between the two. That's why he's saying it's a mushkim, and that's why there's so many questions that the women propose to a lot of the ulama and and students of knowledge about this issue. Okay, the question here is, since mustahada is legally considered pure, so that's a difference. The hokum is different. Uh menstruation al haid and nifas nifas which is uh you know the woman's bleeding after birth that is considered najis you know that's impure that blood but istihada when a, when a woman has istihada any other bleeding from the uh uh from her womb akramakum allah this is not considered najis she can pray. Right. So then, then the point becomes how to distinguish between those, those two types of blood. So since Mustahada is legally considered pure, how can she distinguish between menstruation and bleeding of Istahada when her bleeding continues all the time? How can she distinguish then between menstruation and Istahada, bearing in mind that she is legally and ritually deemed pure in the latter case, meaning she still has to pray. And there were some Sahabiyat uh, that uh, I think Um Hubeish, that she was bleeding, and or maybe it was I can't I can't remember Allah Ta'ala Anha, and she was bleeding for I think it was years, okay, so she was wondering you know she came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam she asked about this, and he said and he and that's when the hukum, uh where we understand the hukum from that hadith and that you know that you should. She should make uh, uh, wudu for every salat. Okay? So, uh, in fact, there are three cases of mustahaba. So, istahaba, there are three uh, cases. First, when a woman used to have a stable, regular menstrual period before she had istahaba. So, a woman who knows her period. She knows every month she has a really good idea about the time, and she and her her height is the same almost every time. It's four or five days, or six or seven days, or whatever it is. It's regular, and it's it's almost always like that. 
this so this woman knows her period in such a case a woman can distinguish between both states relying on her stable menstrual period so she if she has a stable period she will know her time if she's if every month she's right on the dot and it's like seven days her her height and then she hustle <clears throat> then she knows if nine days she's still bleeding or something like this nine and ten days she knows after her regular time, especially if it never fails, then after her seven days, she should make ghusl, and that blood is considered istihada after that, meaning that it's maybe some sort of illness or whatever, okay? So that she would make ghusl, and then she should pray. Uh, in such a case, a woman can distinguish between both states, relying on her stable menstrual period. Uh, thus, such a woman can wait until her usual period ends, then deem any other bleeding as istihada. So that gives you a hukum. That gives you a way to make judgments in these affairs. As the Prophet Sallallahu said to Umm Habiba in this regard, remain away from prayer equal to the length of time that your menstrual period used to prevent you. After that, bathe yourself and perform prayer. Okay. Moreover, the Prophet Sallallahu said to Fatima bint Abi Hubaysh, this is a blood vein, not menstruation. So when your real menstruation period begins, give up performing prayer. So that lets us know, and that's in Bukhari and Muslim, that lets us know that the woman still prays uh, during istihada. The second case, <clears throat> when a woman does not have a regular menstrual period, but her bleeding is always distinguishable. She can always tell a difference between her period and istihada. Sometimes she bleeds and there's a lot of uh, odor and it's thick and it's very dark or black blood. Okay. This is a case of menstruation. And some other times she bleeds red blood, which is neither thick nor with odor. Such a woman is to consider the former kind of blood as that of her menstrual period. So the one that was really, that had odor and was very dark <coughs> and thick that this is what was considered her menstruation. So this is in the case of a woman whose period isn't that regular. Okay? Or she could be new, you know, or, or for, you know, early in her periods and so forth. Okay? So uh, such a woman is, is to consider the former kind of blood as that of her menstrual period during which she gives up prayer and fasting, regards the other kinds of blood as the istihada, the period in which she can perform prayer and observe fasting. For she is considered ritually pure in this case. Okay. The Prophet والسلام, said to Fatima bint Abi Hubaysh, when the menstruation blood comes, it is a black blood that can be recognized. So when that comes, give up performing prayers. But when a different type of blood comes, you can perform ablution and perform prayer. So meaning that for every salat, you, when you're, uh, and when you have uh, istihava, you make wudu. Okay, because you are still bleeding. So you make wudu and then you pray, even though if it's still coming. <coughs> this hadith is related by Abu Dawood and Nisa'i and Deem Sahih by Ibn Hiban and Al-Hakim. And it states that the ruling depends on the judgment and the recognition of the woman herself. Also, likewise, as another point, is during uh, istihada, also a woman can have relations with her husband. You know, they can have relations uh, because that is not considered haith. In Najasa, so um, no. The third uh, point, the third uh, case, when a woman has neither a regular menstrual period nor a distinguishable type of blood, so her she can't distinguish her blood, and uh, she <clears throat> she doesn't have a regular period. <clears throat> Such a woman must follow the prevalent womanly menstrual period. That means in her society or in her family. So if the girls, for example, in your in, in a woman's family, they generally, the mother, the sisters, the aunts, they generally all have about six to eight days uh, of menstrual bleeding. Then, uh, then the woman would follow that, take that as a thing because that's common in her family. Or maybe it will go back to her society or village or what have you okay as the fuqaha outline in their books but <coughs> um and deem whatever discharge after this period is istihada 
So if she's not a regular, she doesn't have regular periods, and she uh, doesn't can't tell the difference in the blood, uh, then she, you know, she goes with the people of her of her family or her kin or her tribe or what have you. Right. Uh, and the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam said to Hana bint Jash uh, that this istihada is a strike caused by Satan. So you should count six or seven days for menstruation. Then you should take a ritual bath. If you see that you have purified yourself, then perform prayer for 24 or 23 days and fast for this will be sufficient for you. So you should do as women do during their menstrual period. Okay. So meaning go judge it by your families. And this is a hadith related by the five compilers of hadith deemed a sahih by Imam At-Tirmidhi. So Imam Fuzan then says, to sum up, a woman with a stable, regular menstrual period distinguishes istihada according to her habit. Uh, the second case, a woman with a distinguishable blood depends on her own judgment and her ability to distinguish between her menstruation and istihada. Uh, the third can scenario, a woman that has neither a regular period nor distinguishable blood is to consider six or seven days a month and then take a ritual uh, bath. Uh, and that, again, the six or seven days, he's given that as a figure, but it, again, it goes back to your, maybe to your, your society or your, what's common, what's common, maybe common in your family or what have you. <clears throat> these aforements, uh, these aforementioned rulings combine the three rules stated by the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam concerning a woman in a state of istihada. Imam Sheikh al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala said there are six distinctive fe features between menstruation and istihada. So Sheikh al Islam said this. He said the first is the regular stable menstrual period, which is the most cogent, uh, reliable, distinctive sign between menstruation and istihada, as any discharge other than that of menstruation is regarded as istihada. Right. The second is the distinguishable blood. The one that has older, thick, and black blood is considered with greater reason as menstruation blood rather than the red one. The third uh, case scenario, the third distinction is to follow the prevalent womanly uh, menstrual period as the original juristic rule is that the ruling on individual follows that of the majority. So that's a, a qa'id fiqiyya, a fiqh principle. These three cases are stated in the sunnah and by means of legal consideration, meaning uh, from the ijtihad of the ulama. Then uh, Shaykh al-Islam said, mentioning the remaining three cases in his conclusion, he said, the most valid opinion is to abide by the first three cases as they were stated in the sunnah and to reject the other scenarios. Okay, so anyway, those three cases are what we want to be concerned with. <coughs> okay. Now, this gets to some of the obligatory acts that you must do when you have istihada, meaning this ex, this blood type, in case she is deemed ritually pure. First, she has to take a ritual bath when her estimated period for menstruation ends. Okay, so she's made an estimate. She now is in istihada. Uh, she, you know, she needs to take her ghusl and, you know, then she's considering that istihada. The second scenario, she has to wash her vulva <clears throat> upon every performance of prayer so she should also clean herself you know clean her her private parts of karma kama law put a piece of cotton or the like in there to prevent bleeding tie it well so as not to fall and perform ablution for every prayer about a woman in a state of istihada, the Prophet ﷺ said she should give a prayer during her menstrual period after which she should take a bath and then she can perform prayer this hadith is related by Abu Dawood, Ibn Majah, a Tirmidhi, and the later maintains it is a Hassan hadith. The Prophet ﷺ also said about the Musahada, <clears throat> meaning the woman who has istihada. I advise you to use cotton uh, for it absorbs the blood. So women can also use the sanitary napkins available nowadays. Third, postnatal bleeding. Okay, so this is the ruling uh, regarding postnatal bleeding after uh, having a thing. <clears throat> the ruling on a woman in a state of postnatal bleeding is like that of menstruation <clears throat> concerning the permissibility of the husband to enjoy her without uh, having intercourse with karmic law. They also have the same rulings regarding the prohibition of intercourse, observing fast, performing prayer, divorce, performing tawaf, 
reciting the Quran and staying in a masjid. Moreover, the rulings in, on both cases are in, are in both cases are the same regarding the obligation of taking a ritual bath when bleeding stops and making up for missed days of fast, but not missed prayers, just like the menstruating woman. The woman, uh, the womb of a woman in a state of postnatal bleeding. Uh, discharges blood during and after birth, giving birth. And this is the blood accumulated during pregnancy. The maximum period of postnatal bleeding is 40 days, according to the majority of scholars. Imam at tirmidhi states, people of the religious, people of religious knowledge <clears throat> among the companions <laughs> of the Prophet وسلم, and their successors, meaning the Salaf, uh, uniformly they had consensus that a woman in a state of postnatal bleeding must give up prayer for 40 days unless her bleeding stops before that. In this case, she has to take a ritual bath and perform prayers. And also, one of the contemporary issues is if a woman has a C-section, and so the child's not coming out through the womb, and uh, maybe she doesn't experience any bleeding or very limited bleeding or something like this, then it's when it stops. Again, so it may, only, it may be a very limited time. could be a week, could be a couple of days, could be... Maybe, perhaps not at all. Allahu <clears throat> Alam. So if the bleeding of a woman in a state of postnatal bleeding stops before the 40th day, her period of postnatal bleeding ends. Okay? And she must have a ritual bath, perform prayer, and practice all acts of worship that have been prohibited for her during her postnatal bleeding period. If a pregnant woman miscarries and starts discharging... And the stillborn has reached a distinctively recognizable form. She is considered a woman in a state of postnatal bleeding. Okay, that means the baby, is, it's been <coughs> formed. An embryo takes about 81 days to three months in order to have a distinctively recognizable shape. If the embryo is a mere lump of flesh or a clinging clot without any recognizable form, the woman is not considered in a state of postnatal bleeding. Even if she starts discharging, she is not to give up prayer or fasting and none of the rulings or postnatal bleeding is applicable in this case. Okay, so that's a faida. Also, Imam Fulzen, he mentioned, it seems suitable to thoroughly complete our discussion at this point by mentioning that some women may take some kinds of medicine that prevents menstrual bleeding in order to observe fasting in the month of Ramadan or to make hajj. Such medications are permissible. <clears throat> If they prevent blood only for a period of time, not forever. If this medicine prevents menstruation forever, a woman is not permitted to take it without her husband's permission. Okay? Since her ability to give birth is also prevented as a result of taking this medicine. Thus, we have briefly highlighted the rulings on menstruation. Uh, and that was the end of... Uh, Imam Fozan's discussion, which was a very comprehensive discussion. We asked Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct, anything I said that was incorrect from myself and the shaitan.